Welcome back to Courtside Comparisons, presented by NerdWallet, Season 2, Episode 2. Tyrese Maxey, thanks for joining us. Thank y'all for having me. Can't wait to get started. And you mentioned it before. We're going to break down some film in a little bit. You've done this a few times over the course of your three-year into your four career. And I wanted to start with how far we've come, right? So I want you to answer some questions with some questions. When you were drafted, 2020 season, what was the big question about Tyrese Maxey? Uh, what do you mean? Like, question from who? Like, every year you've sort of silenced doubters or people have asked. So I'll give you, I'll give you 2020 and then you can do the rest oh, of it. Oh, so you're saying you know like I mean? people said I couldn't shoot. Correct, All 2020, right. Yeah. right? People said I couldn't shoot. And then you proved? That I could shoot. Okay, 2021, what did people say? I don't know, now you're getting to I don't remember this. Uh, what was it then? 2021 was the first time that you stepped in. Oh, and, and started for, for started for us, started at point guard for us. And people asked if you could do it, and you proved? That I could do that. 2022? Uh, shoot, what was it? Play off the ball with James, uh, come off the bench, uh, score 20 a night, play defense, some of everything. And you proved? I think I could do a pretty good job at that. So what I want to know is why, in year four, people are still wondering – can Tyrese Maxey make another leap? Will he be able to run this team? And in weeks one and two, you've proven with flying colors that you can. Why do people continue to question you, do you think? Um, you know, I think they were sent here to motivate me, honestly. Um, and it works, and I appreciate that. Not that I need any more motivation that I put on myself and, uh, like, pressure that I put on myself. But um, I appreciate them, you know, people saying that I can't do stuff. And it uh, motivates me to get in the gym every single day during the summertime. And uh, I keep saying it's find ways to get 1% better. And uh, it's worked for me so far. You're very much in sort of the national media right now. Everybody's talking about you and what you and Joel have been able to do and what you and this team have been able to do. But not everybody knows the backstory that you've told me 5,000 times since you were a rookie, right? So I sort of want to go back in time, but I don't want to bore you by making you tell the story the same way you have in the past. So as it relates to the last question I asked you, young in your basketball career, when you were playing for your dad, mm -hmm. when was the first time you remember people doubting you? Ooh, um, when I was young, I used to play up a grade. So I started playing AAU basketball when I was in the, I want to say second grade. So in second grade, I was playing against third graders. I think my third grade year, I was playing fourth grade. And what happened was, I just remember one of the coaches, and because I was young, um, they lost, we lost our point guard from the year before. He was like, well, is Rich gonna be able to step in and point, or play point guard and run his team and do all these different things with all these older guys? Uh, or do I need to go out and get a point guard? I remember my dad telling him like, man, uh, that's what he does. You know, he, he's They're talking about fourth graders like GMs talk about NBA players. Seriously. <laughs> like, my dad was crazy, though. So, like, we used to do things like in, in second and third grade where we play a tournament and we'll come back home and watch the film of it, all eight games. as me, seven, eight years old. I'm like, Dad, I want to play video games. Why are we we're watching games already happen? But anyway, that just, you know, you know that day, um, you know, a coach in the fourth grade, which I appreciate him because it, without, without doubters, without, I guess you could say haters, whatever you want to call them, um, you probably wouldn't work as hard. People wouldn't work as hard. I don't know if that's the case for me, but I do appreciate them because they work, make me work even harder than I already do. So it's been great. We're going to watch some highlights. Tyrese, insane start to your season. If I had told you, I'm not pushing play yet. If I had told you, I don't know, a few weeks ago, you would say you would believe it. But let's just pretend that I, let's just pretend that I, I went into the future and I said to you, Tyrese, in week two, you're going to average more points than Giannis, Dame, LeBron, Kawhi, and Kyrie, you were going to average more assists than Russ, Ben Simmons, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Anthony Edwards. You would have said, yeah, I know, or you would have said, that's kind of cool. I would say it sounds about right. I mean, honestly, that's what I would say. I mean, listen, I have the ultimate confidence in myself. So if opportunity presents itself, I'm going to take it every single, every single time. So I'm not going to sit here and say I'm surprised. I'm just going to sit here and say that uh, I was prepared you know what I mean, I prepared with myself with the work that I put in to do whatever it took to win games. And if that's what it takes to win games, it's getting assists or scoring or rebounding. That's what I'm going to go out there and try to do. And um, 
the numbers, whatever they are, the numbers will speak for themselves. All right, well, let's take a look at what went into some of those numbers. Let's start on your birthday and break down some film from the last few days that stood out to me, and I hope that I made good choices. Curtis Max with the ball with his right hand. Oh, step back three over Durant. Bang. That's nice. I mean, honestly, I'm about this real fast. Fourth quarter, Joel was sitting down, up by five going into the fourth. Uh, my mindset here, I didn't have a great game. I haven't had a great shooting night. I wasn't having a great shooting night. My passing was pretty good, but I wasn't having a great shooting night. And uh, I knew I was going to be ultra aggressive coming out in the fourth quarter to make sure Joel got extra rest. Um, and just because I knew that it was my time to, to be aggressive and be successful. I'm curious, is this just your game face or was it a result of like, okay, I haven't been making shots tonight. I'm kind of pissed off, but I know that that was cool. That's like about time. That's really what that face says, about time. Like, it's funny, like it's, it's times in the game where I get really good looks and I miss them, but I make really hard shots and it really makes me upset because like the easy shot I miss, but the hard shots I make. And when I get a good easy one like that and like a, like a walk in three and I make it, after I've missed a couple, it makes me excited. In your head when that's happening, do you know that that's Kevin Durant in front of you, or is it just the defender? Nah, it's just the Suns. Uh, of course, it's Kevin Durant. He's like, you know, top 10, arguably top five, you know, greatest scorers of all time, greatest players of all time, if, you know, you go there. But uh, I'm not really thinking that at that moment that it's Kevin Durant. Uh, I'm just trying to score. I'm trying to get a bucket. It's eight seconds left on the clock, and he switches out on me, and, you know, he drops that back foot. And get the shoot over. Let's now talk about a lot. A lot has been made, rather, of your early season relationship with Joel Embiid, the best pick and roll duo in the NBA as of this filming. Tell me about what you guys worked on over the summer and how you're seeing it pay off. You know, it's now. funny. We didn't do a whole lot of of on court work together. We did a lot of talking. We did a lot of film, and you know, because I worked out with Drew Hanlon this summer as well. He kind of was able to to add what he was telling both of us in our workouts. Joel doesn't want doesn't work out as early as I work out, but because like we knew like that we were going to be playing together a lot, and we kind of you know once the once the situation happened, um, we just kind of got comfortable. And because you know we're good friends, I think um, it just works well on the court because we're able to talk to each other. I'm able to go up to him and say certain things and and uh, have a conversation about what I saw on the play before, what he saw on the play before, and because we can do that. And we both want to see each other and this team succeed, so that's a positive as well. You guys definitely, you said, I think we're good friends. You definitely are. And I remember saying this to you when you were a rookie. I said, I've worked with Joel a lot. I've watched him work with rookies a lot. He really liked you then. And to see the relationship that you guys have now developed on and off the court has been an absolute delight. Yeah, Joel's nice. Good person. I was going to ask as well, I know you said that over the summer you worked out with your friends in Garland. Mm -hmm. Who How, was Joel? Well, yeah, first of all, who was Joel? And second of all, They as all wanted to be Joel. <laughs> Everybody, literally, they all wanted to be Joel. I, I, I had, like, it's funny, it was like three-on-three -three situations. Mm -hmm. I had guys be melt. I had guys be whoever in the corner or wherever, filling up in other spots. They all wanted to be Joel. They all wanted to shoot short, mid-range jump shots. It's hilarious. And as defenders, though, how do how do your boys compare to actual NBA defenders? You know, they're you know, it's funny. They're they're not short. They're I mean, I guess they're my height, so they're like six two, six three. Uh, I had a, a friend that I played with in in high school who was six nine, so he helped sometimes. Uh, and he was being Joel or being the defender that was guarding Joel sometimes, so that also helped as well. All right. So speaking of reacting. When you're frustrated, talk to me about this play. Yeah. From from the start of it to the finish. Yeah, it's like I, I create so much separation on the jump shot and make it short, struggling. But it's like I took all of my anger out on this ball. Like you know, I don't I don't block shots as often as I used to. Like in high school, I remember when I was in high school, it was a very identical play, and I broke like my leg, my fibula. So like I, I kind of went away from it. But like when I get moments and I get opportunities to do it, and I think it's safe. Uh, I still love doing it. And it's like one of my favorite plays to do. Like run down, chase down somebody, and them not thinking that I'm capable of blocking it, and I just block it off the glass. Which of your teammates did this remind me of most? There's only uh, one right answer. Probably Joel or, or Milt. 
Oh, Jaden Springer. There you go. Jaden Springer does it way different than I do it, though. He jumps off two and he, he blocks it with two hands. And so for me, doesn't... from my angle, though, it was the height and, like, sort of the shock factor. Right. Just as being a smaller guard, right, like, right. and getting up that high, kind of coming out of nowhere. Jaden does this, like, once per game as right, well. Right, right, right. When he's in there, he'll do – he does something spectacular every time I see him in there. This one right here uh, is – this is so funny. I'm, I've been struggling in the game. I haven't made it three. I've missed, like, three or four. I catch the ball, and he's, he's already sagging off of me, and I kind of like pump fake it when I should have just shot the first one. And all I hear is Javel saying, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. And I shoot it, and he says, thank you. Stop pump faking all the time. Shoot it. You can even see him standing he's there. staring and looking at me like, what are you doing? Shoot the ball. He was so mad. Then we had like a timeout after. He's like, stop pump faking. Just shoot it. But, you know, for, for the MVP to have confidence in you, Hey, I think, you know, that's that's the best you could possibly get, it, you know what I'm saying? The MVP of the league, uh, you know, your brother, some guy who kind of is the leader of our team, you know, anchor of our defense, anchor of our offense, anchor of our franchise. Um, they have the confidence in you, then why not let it fly? So this made me think of your pregame warm-up routine. Which I love. Exactly. So when I see a bigger defender like KP right in front of you, I immediately think, J Love. Yeah. And that wasn't always something that was so let's let's tell people what we're talking about. Right. Jason Love, player development coach mm -hmm. with you guys, has been with you for your whole career, right. has become part of in the last year or so your pregame routine. Right, right. Towards the end, you shoot a few threes over him. He is very tall mm -hmm. and large. And he looks exactly like this. Just like that. Just like that. The funny thing about it is I started doing it because uh I forgot what happened. I think it was Robert Williams who blocked my shot once. And I, because I tried to get closer, I tried to get closer to the line, and I remember Smith Rivers was telling me like, "Bro, don't get closer, just shoot it from where you are." And uh, Rico Hines has really been on me this year about shooting deeper threes, and uh, it just felt good. I knew I had enough space to get it off, so I get it off quick, and they are so like scared of me driving uh, because of, like quickness and finishing ability sometimes that they sag off to give me just enough room to shoot it, and it worked out for us. And he wouldn't have kept up with you. Right. Speed wise. Right. So, so what you're funny. saying is he was cooked either way. Either way. That's that simple. On this one right here, when I got this rebound, Melt was what Melt um, has been struggling. But Melt is like one of the best shooters, like catch and shoot guys that we have on our team, if not in the NBA. So I have two options right here. When I'm dribbling up the court, I have Joel and Beats my left. Great option. And he has one on one with Al Hoka. But I know that Melt hasn't got a shot. I know Melt's been playing his behind off on defense, getting deflections. And I'm like, man, I got to reward him right here. So I throw it all the way across court past Joel. I can see him looking like, what is this guy doing? And Melt bangs a three. And it was a big three. You know what I'm saying? A three that we needed. And I just feel like it gave Melt confidence to keep shooting. Because I, I'm on him like Joel's on me. Shoot the ball. Like every time you're open, you need to shoot the ball because you're a great shooter and they're going to fall eventually. So. I was proud of that one, proud of that. The speed, too, of the two of you. Yeah, we're running fast. I'm not running that fast. We're kind of running slow, but, like, we're, we're getting up the court really quickly. All right, so this one, this is how we're going to finish. Um, in your rookie season, you sort of came on the map with your floater. Mm -hmm. And for those that weren't following us at the time, George Niang of the then Utah Jazz, Tells a story about talking to Mess you as a rookie. <laughs> Go ahead, tell him what happened. I played as a rookie, you know what I mean, on and off. I think it was like 15, 16 minutes ago. I can't remember exactly what it was. But it was a time we were on the West Coast. Joel didn't play, so I had an opportunity to play some. And I get in the game, and I make one floater. And when I shoot it, George Nair is like, ah, oh, nah, you don't got that. And I looked at him like, who are you talking to? Like. What do you mean I ain't got that? I do it again. So I come back down. It's the next trip. Hit another floater. He's like, then we go to free throws. Somebody shoot free throws on their team. And I'm standing next to him. Like, who ain't got that? He's like, man, it's luck. You know what I'm saying? You just got in the game. You get two shots. I come back down maybe two, three plays later and hit a deep floater from like the free throw line. He's like, all right, man. All right. I got it. Fine. You can make floaters. You get it. But, uh, you know, it's just like, like you said, I'm small. I'm 6'2". I have to be able to find ways to, to shoot over taller defenders, and that's one way that I can get it off quickly. So this is fourth quarter against Boston. You've talked about your aggressive starts to fourth quarters. And when you started your fourth quarter this way, it reminded me of that story that George told. Because as much as you've progressed, as amazing as, as you've gotten, or always were, but have shown everybody that you are, 
you're still going back to what was sort of your little signature as a rookie, and it was just so cool to see in this setting. Yep, it's just bread and butter. Like, uh, I talk about it, I just talked about it, somebody was asking me about it, and it's like, for me, because of, like, my three-point emergence and, like, the way I finish at the rim, teams are really trying to take away those two because those are two high-percentage shots. And the mid-range is kind of a lost art in the NBA, so it's like, hey, we'll give up the mid-ranges, we'll give up the, the, the tough shots that, that me or anybody in the league have to make, and we don't want to give away his, his easy twos and his long threes. So sometimes it's easy for me to get in there and get those shots off because they don't, you know, they're okay with giving them up and I'm okay with shooting them because that's what I can make. All right, last play. We're going back in time a little. End of the first half. Yep. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah I think it's like I'm, I'm very comfortable in situations where it's late clock, like mm -hmm. five seconds, four seconds, and I have to go to the length of the court. One, because I know that I can, I can run like with the ball Absolutely. fast Perfect. and because I, I have – the ultimate confidence in my jump shot is from deep three, and I know I can get to the rim. So then I feel like it puts the defense in the bind as far as, okay, we have to be up, but he's fast enough to go around us. So it's like in this situation, they switch another guard on me, Drew Holiday, great defender. I'm trying to get to a three, honestly, but he's up so high, I can't, I can't get to my spot to shoot a three. So I just spin, and once I spin, there's nobody there, and I get an easy floater off. Okay, now be honest. When you run into the tunnel immediately after, how cool did you feel? Mm, I was really more, I don't know if I'll say cool, I was really just more excited about making the shot. And after the run that we had went on in that second quarter, um, we were able to get us back, get ourselves back into the game. We were losing going into the second quarter. So that was good. You know, play great defense. Uh, we got to stop, go down there and get a basket, look at Joel Lean and happy about it. So uh, we we're, were great. We we're great. The bench was happy about it too. You just didn't see because you ran away. Absolutely. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey, thank you so much for sitting down for Courtside Comparisons presented by NerdWallet. All right, NerdWallet. Thank you all for having me.